Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting up the Squad of Havocs from the new Chaos Combat Patrol box. When it came to assembly, I assembled the models fully up until the point they would get in the way of painting. More specifically, the heads are not attached to the bodies, their guns are not attached, and their backpacks are not attached. And in some cases, their left arm is or is not attached, it depending if it would get on the way of painting. And I used Bright Touch General Purpose Gray Car Primer for priming. And on the top left, I just have an auto cannon. if anyone wonders. It's simply so that I can test out some painting moves or stuff and techniques on that first before I paint the actual models. Now for actual painting, so, well, not really, this is the pre-coating, so I'm going to start off with Eschen Grey, Grey Sear, and White Scar White. So basically the dark color goes from the underside with an airbrush, the bright color comes from the down with an airbrush, and then I use White Scar White as a dry brush to pick out all the edges and details scattered throughout, because there are a lot here. Now I'm using Eschen Grey because it's not a very strong black, or strong dark color, but it's something that can easily gel with the Grey Sear, which is... It's not a uh, palette witch flesh, this is a light gray, but it's far distant enough from the white scar white so that when you dry brush on it, the white from the white scar white will be very clear and obvious. And then I didn't show up, but I got Lamian medium and I mixed it with a little bit of white scar white and I painted thin lines on probably the most prominent folds in the armor to make it very clear and obvious. Because uh, one thing when you dry brush a lot, you get this like spider webbing. And this will help clear it up on some of the more prominent areas. Alright, now with Abaddon Black and Lamian Medium, we're going to make their armor wash. Now, normally I start off with painting the largest part of the model that's one color. In this case, it's their black armor. So, I'm also going to showcase how I actually made this paint this time. So, Abaddon Black with, I use droppers, three drops of Lamian Medium and one drop of water mixed together, and it's usually the right consistency that I need. I won't promise to do it all the time, because in my workflow, I just keep going and sometimes I forget to record small things, like making the mixes. And then I apply it all throughout the armor. So, here's the thing. If this was a single character, I would do well, what I'm doing now on this first model, where paint everything except basically paint just the metal plate, or the armor plates. However, I realized I was speed painting, and this would take forever to do. So basically, I just go back and I just coat the entire model in it. Uh, even the stuff that's supposed to be gold trim and such. I was like, okay, screw it. And so I use this as a wash. And now on to the metals. With Liquitex Gloss Varnish, uh, the Dura Aluminum and Transparent Burnt Sienna from Liquitex Inks, we're going to create a very fluid paint. So three drops of Dura Aluminum, like three drops of the Transparent Burnt Sienna, and three drops of Gloss Varnish, and three drops of water has been the consistency that I found pretty well. I forgot to show the mix. And then I apply it all over the metal. This paint, the uh, Vallejo Acrylic, the, the Dura Aluminum, is so strong compared to uh, Runefang Steel Air from GW that the shine uh, completely covers up anything underneath so it actually completely undoes any pre-coating surprisingly so that made it kind of redundant sadly but it goes on very easily And then I proceed to do the same thing again, except I swap out the Duralunum with Exhaust Vent, uh, exhaust vent uh, Vallejo, which is a very dark metal, and so this created a dark brass, and I just use that for the shell casings. All 
Alright, now we're going to try something. With Liquitex Gloss Varnish and Vallejo Metal Color, the exhaust manifold one, which is a dark metal, essentially, uh, so I wanted the metal color to flow into the joint and be a little, be able to highlight the pre-coating. So like a one-to-one -one mix of Gloss Varnish and the exhaust manifold, a little bit of water to make it flow, I applied it on all the base metal parts. Alright, with Lamp Black and Burnt Umber Oil Paints, we're going to create a wash. It's mostly going to be black with a little bit of brown to make it not too black, an off brown, or an off black. And so we apply uh, mineral spirits in, make the mix, and then we just wash all the models with it all over. Which is a little difficult to do because some parts have to rest down on the ground. So like for like the last cans, I did one side, dried it with a hair dryer, then did the other side. And so basically this process was apply, wipe with a sponge the most raised, most prominent areas so that the, uh, the wash is still in the recesses. And then we apply a second wash that's thinner all over and then do a light uh, scrubbing with uh, brushes on the most prominent, most raised areas. And then finally I did a much thicker wash of the Lamp Black Burnt Umber and then I, with a fine brush, pressed on all the rivets in their armor to create like little dots to accentuate it. In the end this didn't turn out too well overall. And now with Rune Lord Brass and Rune Fang Steel Air, I, th I basically added Rune Fang Steel more and more into some Rune Lord Brass until it was bright enough to be close and be brighter than the metallics that are on the models. And basically, uh, I didn't repaint everything. I just basically painted the edges, uh, large open planes, things where the light would pick out more, more raised areas and stuff. Sometimes I just overbrushed or edge brushed on some things. This was meant to just cause the light to shine on some things. That's it. And now with Waz Daka Red, Evil Sun, Scarlet, and Troll Slayer Orange, we're going to paint the Red Eye lenses. So here's basically what I do. I start off with the dark color, then fill in 90% of that with Evil Sun Scarlet, and then I apply a drop with the Troll Slayer Orange. How to properly do that is you take a very fine brush, and you don't actually drag the brush, you just tap. You're just tapping repeatedly, and you're filling out the eye lens. And that's how I was able to paint pretty accurately on almost every single eye lens. I screwed up on one. And uh, some lead belcher. So basically what I did was I took this and I tried to overbrush onto like the things holding the shells together on the heavy bolters. It's barely noticeable. And then took skeleton horde contrast and applied it onto the backs of the heavy bolter like the shell like thingies and the shells that are on their belt to just to add some more color to it to make it differentiate. Alright, with Waz Daka Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Troll Slayer Orange, again, I'm going to paint the glow on the plasma rifle. So basically, we paint the, I already painted the coilings with Waz Daka Red, and so basically what we're doing is we're dry brushing with Evil Sun Scarlet around so that it picks out the areas 
around the coils. Then we're gonna do the same thing again with Troll Slayer Orange. And then with a brush, I'm gonna paint the edges of the square part of the coils. Yeah, and just to pick it out, apply several layers because it's a little transparent. And now with Skeleton Horde Contra, Skeleton Flesh and Corvus Black, we're gonna paint the dam the wear and tear on the guns, uh, the plasma rifle, and the two heavy bolters. So basically, Skeleton Horde Contrast on the muzzle, a majority of it. The Gulliman Flesh on the tip and like a third of going down the barrel of what we do with Skeleton Horde. And then I don't show up a Corvus Black dot on the plasma rifle in order to make the gun barrel. And then speeding through, I forgot to get footage of me gluing the models together, but then I super glued them to their bases, which I just threw together in a short period of time, or actually it was not a short period of time, it took a long time of just waiting for drying, but... And afterwards I then drilled holes through their feet and then put these L-shaped uh, paper clips through and sealed them in with uh, super glue. And done. Okay, so these guys were a very simple kit to make. Uh, so a few things. Okay. Uh, this video is coming out a little bit later than what I've normally been doing for the past month. That's not because these guys took a long time to paint. It's because like I took a three day out of state vacation. So if anyone's wondering like this takes a really long time to do, well it kind of does, but it's delayed not because of the workload. So the thing about this is this was just tedium, but I feel like I have done terrible on this. Uh, so the armor color is a bit inconsistent. The sergeant's shoulder pads are darker than the other ones around them. The metallic, it's like I did a lot of redundant steps. A lot of the dry brushing was ultimately pointless and didn't show off that well, especially on the gold trim. Uh, switching out the rune fang steel for dura aluminum for creating my metallic washes the metal is much stronger and much shinier but i didn't account for that uh or didn't really roll with the punch and so when i applied the oil wash over it didn't really work as well um it, yeah it didn't uh, flow or work as well uh, there's some issues with the metal and when i went back over it it's basically like i repainted the same thing a bunch of times and so because the next the last unit in the box is a 10 man and <laughs> uh, so I'm not going to continually strain over like all these details and stuff I'm trying to paint as fast as possible so this was speed painting as best as I could try to do it some steps were redundant some things were not really right uh, some of the colors overall are inconsistent because I'm not trying to go back and make it perfectly uh, also, a thing I noticed, uh, the Combat Patrol box has no, um, what are those called, uh, decals. None. Look through, like, there was none. And so, like, on the box art, you can see some of these guys have, like, this uh, Black Legion symbolism on their shoulder pads. Like, nope, there is nothing for that. So, that was strange. Uh, but overall, there were some things I did that were good, some things that were not so good. I mean, these guys will just blend into the background. I mean, all their details are there. You can clearly see what they have, the individual details, the metalwork is fine, the bases are fine. So this, they're clear and distinct, well-done models. It's just, I feel it's a bit lackluster, and I feel like I wasted a lot of time that wasn't necessary. Also, the plasma coil uh, on the rifle is really good. I actually like that. Um, so I'm going to give these guys a 7 out of 10. But I'm going to have to think a bit more on how I would do the 10-man. I'm actually going to take a small sabbatical from that, and I'm going to swap over to another kit just to cleanse my palette. So I'm going to do the 10-man the, uh, the at a later date, but relatively soon, but it's not exactly the next one. Overall, I'm learning from this, but I think the metal trim will have to be handled differently, uh, step-wise. I don't want to exactly waste my time. So I'm thinking of is, in process-wise, completely drop the white scar, uh, yeah, the white scar dry brush, and just do a little bit with Lamy and Medium, and only highlight the most prominent lines and areas. The second thing is that the metallic trim will be done after the armor is entirely done. So the armor is painted on, then the washes of the oil, and then wiped off, re uh, reapplied, washed off, or re scrubbed off, and then the oil, or uh, then the metal will go on and maybe a spot, uh, maybe a thin wash will go on just to get into some of the recesses, and then a spot drop onto the rivets and bolts. That's probably going to be better. 
because I'm trying to get the as like the mod of the channel <laughs> I was like, how can I do the most with the least amount of effort? And so these guys were a good test trial. To be fair, I painted these guys much faster than the last Chaos Space Marines I painted in my life, which is like 2013, was a bunch of Night Lord Raptors, and that took like 40 hours. But whatever. So these guys, in a way, they're they're a good learning step, but I'm disappointed with the process. The models themselves are a 7 out of 10. I, I feel like Black Legion's a little dull. Well, anyway, let's move on. So, like the video if you like the video, share it if you want to share, comment if you want to comment, nitpick anything, or maybe think I could have done something better, because I'm not going to do a 10-man squad with a bunch of redundancies. So, uh, next time I will show how I make the bases. I've just been going back and forth. I'm trying to get the colors right for this. And yeah, alright, see you soon. Bye.